When we talk about microbial metabolism, we are talking about the sum of all the chemical reactions that occur in a cell. Metabolism can be broken down into two parts, catabolism and anabolism. You may have heard of the terms catabolic and anabolic before. Catabolic reactions are decomposition reactions, where complex macromolecules are broken down into simple molecules. The breakdown of complex molecules into simple molecules produces energy. Anabolic reactions are synthesis reactions, where simple molecules are built up into complex macromolecules. The buildup of simple molecules into complex molecules requires energy. This is a diagram that summarizes the relationship between catabolism and anabolism. Starting at the bottom, in the blue box, we see the three macromolecules that provide energy for us, starch, proteins, and lipids. Moving clockwise in the diagram up to the purple box, we see that the macromolecules can be broken up into their monomers, glucose, amino acids, glycerol, and fatty acids. The pink box indicates that these reactions that break down the complex macromolecules are catabolic reactions. You will notice that as catabolic reactions occur, ATP is produced. You may remember that ATP is the energy storage molecule, so it makes sense that as energy is produced in catabolic reactions, it is stored as ATP. The ATP that is created in catabolic reactions is used to fuel the energy requiring anabolic reactions. Continuing clockwise on the diagram from the purple box back down to the blue box, we see that glucose, amino acids, glycerol, and fatty acids are combined to make up starch, proteins, and lipids in anabolic reactions. Because anabolism is an energy requiring process, ATP is broken down into ADP and inorganic phosphate as anabolic reactions occur. Metabolic pathways refer to the different pathways or series of reactions by which essential molecules are formed or broken down. These pathways are determined by enzymes, which are coded for by DNA in the cell. Each step in a metabolic pathway requires a different enzyme. This diagram shows the anabolic pathways by which complex molecules are formed from simpler molecules. For example, you can see that products of the Krebs cycle combine with ammonia to form amino acids, which make up proteins. This diagram shows the catabolic pathways by which complex molecules break down into simple molecules. For example, you can see that lipids break down into fatty acids and glycerol. The fatty acids get converted into acetyl-CoA, which then enters the Krebs cycle. You can see that the anabolic, anabolic and catabolic reactions are really just opposites of each other. Redox reactions refer to oxidation and reduction reactions. Hopefully you remember the terms oxidation and reduction from chemistry, and you may remember some of the mnemonic devices associated with them. LEO says GER stands for lose electrons oxidized, gain electrons reduced. Oil rig stands for oxidation involves loss, reduction involves gain. So when we talk about oxidation, we mean a loss of electrons. Oxidation reactions are catabolic reactions because they produce energy. When we talk about reduction, we mean a gain of electrons. Reduction reactions are anabolic reactions because they require energy. Historically, oxidation reactions were used to refer to reactions with oxygen, which caused increases in the mass of the compounds that were formed during these reactions. Conversely, Reduction reactions referred to reactions in which oxygen was removed, which caused decreases in the mass of the compounds that were formed during these reactions. Oxidation and reduction reactions are coupled reactions, meaning that they happen simultaneously. You can't have an oxidation reaction without a reduction reaction, and vice versa. 
This diagram illustrates the idea of a coupled reaction. Initially, molecule A has an electron and molecule B doesn't. In the reaction, however, B takes the electron away from A, leaving A without it. Because A loses an electron, the reaction of A with an electron to A without an electron is an oxidation reaction. Because B gains an electron, the reaction of B without an electron to B with an electron is a reduction reaction. A is oxidized because it loses an electron. Since it loses its electron to B, A is a reducing agent because it allows B to be reduced. B is reduced because it gains an electron. Since it takes the electron from A, it is an oxidizing agent because it allows A to be oxidized. The reduced form of a molecule contains more electrons than the oxidized form. Therefore, A on the left, with the electron, is in the reduced form, and A on the right, without the electron, is in the oxidized form. B on the left, without the electron, is in the oxidized form, and B on the right, with the electron, is in the reduced form. It is not possible to track the movement of electrons in biological systems. However, hydrogen atoms are often transferred with electrons, so we can track oxidations and reductions by looking at the movement of hydrogens. Remember that oxidation involves a loss of electrons or hydrogen, or a gain of oxygen. Reduction involves a gain of electrons or hydrogen, or a loss of oxygen. Here we see an organic molecule with two hydrogen atoms and a molecule of NAD+, the importance of which we will discuss at another time. In the reaction between the organic molecule and the NAD+, the organic molecule loses both hydrogen atoms. As a result, the organic molecule is oxidized. Because oxidation and reduction are coupled reactions, the NAD plus must be reduced. It accepts one complete hydrogen atom and the electron from the other hydrogen atom to form NADH. In a biological system, we wouldn't be able to see the moving electrons, but we would be able to evaluate the change of the compound from NAD plus to NADH. Because the compound gained a hydrogen, it was reduced. Let's look at an example of oxidation and reduction in a chemical reaction. This reaction shows the breakdown of glucose into carbon dioxide and water during cellular respiration. We notice that glucose, the carbon-containing compound on the left, loses hydrogens to become carbon dioxide, the carbon-containing compound on the right. Therefore, glucose is the reduced form of the carbon-containing compound, and carbon dioxide is the oxidized form. The hydrogens lost by glucose were picked up by the oxygen on the left, forming water. Therefore, the oxygen on the left is the oxidized form, while the water on the right is the reduced form.